Whether you're a diehard sports fan, a hopeless romantic, or a comedy aficionado, the Xfinity 10G network was made for streaming it all. Worry less about buffering when streaming your favorite shows, movies, or live sports and enjoy a better way to watch. Xfinity gives you a reliable connection for streaming plus all the entertainment you love all in one place. Fear not, because now you can finally sit back, relax, and stream your favorite entertainment and sports like never before with the Xfinity 10G network. Just be sitting up there jacked with Pepsi. <laughs> I'm there for the pack out. You just got to pack me in. Committed to the bow early on. Like, I love getting close and putting up. A- you cover a range of stuff on here, too, right? Like, we call this the uh, the THP World Headquarters. You know, my grandpa Roy Weatherby. I came into, like, that golden little pocket where there was, like, four or five different bowls. Just- You're Canadian? We're doing yeah, a Canadian I- podcast? My name's Douglas Bowes. I'm Robbie Denning. Roy Candy. You know, in the early stages of a, of a, an alignment together, it's hard to see with them walking away, you know? Yeah. And it was over two years. So it was, uh, I mean, you know, it's a business. It is what it is. Um, that is it, it is ultimately, but still. Yeah. So do you want to do a big introduction on yourself or do you want me to do it for you? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to let you give me an introduction if you if you're okay with that. But I'm also happy to if you ask who I am, I can just do a little download. Yeah, why don't you do a little? Why don't you do a little introduction on yourself, and then just kind of fit in how and when you got into hunting, okay. like five no longer than five minutes. Elevator, sure. elevator pitch, pitch me here. I'll, I'll, okay, pitch you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, my name's Ashley Stuckless. I, uh, I basically started hunting, uh, when I was about five years old, chasing my dad around. So it's been in my life for, uh, for my entire life, basically. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been an interesting progression, you know, especially now getting into my, into my forties and, uh, you know, not having my main mentor, my dad around anymore. And, and then me really taking a hard look at that. And, uh, you know, I, I come from a meat hunting background, a sustenance hunting family. Um, very proud of that. It'll always be a core of, of who I am, but I have, uh, you know, I set some goals, you know, me and my dad had some talks, uh, towards the end uh, about some goals and I, I hadn't set out on them yet, but I was, uh, you know, planning to start filming and, uh, start changing my perspective a little bit to, uh, to sort of reach some benchmarks, uh, in in my hunting endeavors. So I still feel like I'm kind of at the beginning of that journey. Um, things have been starting to, to come together. You know, I've had some some success uh, that I would say is more representative of uh, you know what what people like to see in Instagram posts and stuff of you know the the grip and grins uh, and uh, you know I have been getting satisfaction out of that it, it has um, I don't feel it's cheap in my perspective I I feel it's it's broadened it, it add, added to the challenge you know I was quite happy. Just just a few years ago, coming off the hill with uh, just a modest little four point or, or, you know, even a little three point in, in any buck season. Uh, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. And, and the reason why I'm I'm happy with the change is it's made it harder. Uh, and along with the filming, uh, adding the filming in is also, you know, two X, the difficulty factor in my mind of uh of the hunting. at least at least 2x yeah it, it it is it does make it quite challenging um i mean i think it's not to cut you off here buddy but no i it. i think uh the filming acts aspect of it is it harder just as harder as or just as harder if not harder than the actual hunting like like 
um, when we were out together, we did a bit of filming. We'll get into that later, but just like sure. like putting it all together and doing it all, and like the amount of like the patience and dedication and just like the eye you have to have and like you know like just the movement it takes is it it blows me away like you're running up in front of me like behind me moving around getting the shot you never stop moving right and yeah. it, it, like it, it was uh yeah i mean like it's 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 crazy how much extra it is like i bet you if, if you looked at how many steps you took and how many steps i took throughout the day you probably doubled me yeah yeah it it, it definitely adds a lot to the movement um it's a big uh distraction uh because you have to part your brain from the hunting brain because you know yeah i'm much more alert to game if i'm not alert to my camera and uh -huh. and if i'm standing camera like you say running ahead for that shot well you're still looking around you're, yeah you're, you're you're still actively hunting i may be distracting you a 10 percent i'm i'm 80 percent not hunting maybe well and, and you're and you like you get into the zone so well i remember that time when we were on the bear hunt we we're kind of up over the ridge and um w well we seen the bear from down below we went made a stop we went around the ridge and we were stalking it wasn't where we thought it was going to be and so we're like okay well let's let's get out of here and all of a sudden we're cr crossing the ridge and the bear pops up and i'm like holy shit i jumped down and like you're in camera mode and i'm like you see that bear and you're like no no, no dude i'm working the fucking no. camera here and i'm like yeah, you didn't yeah. see that bear are you kidding me i'm like holy fuck. no but i got the sh i got the reaction shot now and then uh you know he wasn't there long enough for me no. to get my bearings and get on them there uh i definitely got you hitting the deck and then i hit the deck because i knew it was business time um and then uh we uh yeah, I, I, I did not lay eyes on that bear, except for when we first seen him from, oh, even then. No, I'd never seen that bear. Not once. Yeah, that's too bad. Well, yeah. anyway, I, that, that was a lot of fun. And it's funny, like thinking about, I, I obviously replayed that lots in my head because like with any, with any hunt you have, you only, you only revisit, like really revisit the ones that don't work out. The ones that are successful, you're, you kind of just like, oh yeah, that was awesome. It worked out. We did everything you right. Did, like yeah. onto the next, right? Like it's never. Yes. <laughs> For but, sure. Yeah. Like I, I definitely, the ones that'll keep you up and, and you know, when, you know, to me, I, a lot of, so much energy goes into the planning and the thinking about the hunt and, and then uh -huh. and also as the I leave the of it. The, yeah. I, yeah, the minutia, I do love that. I'm kind of a, a nerd when it comes to the gear and the planning and, you know, uh, you know, just getting the whole hunt laid out. And then, um, and you're right. Like when it doesn't work out, it just sinks it deep. So you're yeah. just, you're just like, man, I didn't do anything wrong necessarily. It's just that should have worked. It didn't work. And, and no, then... and that bear was doing funny things. Like from the bottom, we glassed that thing from down below and it was cruising up. Like it was moving. Obviously it was, I don't it... know if it was feeding. What It looked like it was cruising up. Like it had a mission. And it was going over the ridge. And then, so we cut it off. We had good wind and there was no reason. Like if it kept going on that trajectory, there's no reason that we wouldn't have seen it. It wouldn't have crossed our path. And then well, we get up there and it's gone. And, we're, and I was like, what the fuck? And you're like, was there really a bear or was yeah, it? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't well, see I, it. I, 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 it was gone. I totally believed you. But I, I, I was like, you know, there was just a couple times we had really good wind. We we're coming up and, yeah. you know, like we ripped across that couple K or three K, mm -hmm. whatever it was there, a couple miles, even that might have been by the time we ripped the truck around the back and then peeled up over the top. You know, the wind was good for 95% of the time. And just a couple times it switched mm -hmm. when we were coming through a couple of those trenches. We were still hundreds, uh, yeah, you know, we were still uh, a little ways away from him uh, at that point or where we thought he'd be. Uh, but I thought, oh, maybe he did, you know, get yeah. our wind. And there's That's always, with bears too, there's always that chance because they have such good, they can just smell so well. And, and there is out, always like, that chance that you, and you never know. But then when he popped up again on the ridge that we were originally on and moving in towards a direction, like there was a little draw in there, there was some water. And I was like, oh man, he's coming he's right coming down. So I like scurried right over behind the bush and he's working his way up. He pokes his face up and then he kind of works around and he beetles out of there. And I, like, and then, so we, you know, we, we, we run across the draw, we get back over and like, 
when we were walking across there, I kept glassing because I fully expected him just to pop up again like he did when he, the first couple of times were when I respotted him uh, the second time when we were up there. Like I, I was just picturing him just poking up. So I was getting ranges every, you know, every 10 Everybody, yards of move, I, yeah, I, I'd rearrange it. I'd rearrange it yeah. thinking all he has to do is I just need to see a little bit of black poke up over the, over the, over the hill. Yeah. I'm going to draw back. He's going to step up two feet and he's going to be dead. Yeah. I, and it I just never it. happened. I got, it was pretty fun to capture that too, because you really got into your psychology, even though you weren't talking, you're just moving through, but you could see exactly what you're doing. You were, you were pinging ranges there, you know, every, every, I, I don't know, we'd walk 20 or 30 yards and you'd rearrange everything. So you mm -hmm. just basically kept that radar rolling out in front of you there. And I was thinking the same thing, this bear that I, I don't, think we spooked him like I, he never no. he didn't look spooked or anything um it's just we had to pick a direction i guess when we went down through that drainage and back over and he chose a different one yeah and i think i think he just slipped in it was kind of really treated in there and you know he could have still been in there for all we know but like when we were up there we just got came to the consensus you know like let's not push him let's not spook him out here directly obviously we can't see him it's getting dark let's back out of here for the morning yeah. and uh yeah. um when we went in there the next like the next morning we were hiking there man like so much bear activity in there oh yeah for all oh, that was insane like you could see the the boar break trails on that the one little old skid road that we chased up there uh, i think there was at least 20 to 25 break you know stick breaks where they're just putting that yeah. stick on their back mm -hmm. and breaking it across their head just to mark their height for the sows that cruise through so yeah pretty, yeah pretty neat. yeah so what did you think of that country up there we're not we want to have to get into exactly where it was but oh no uh, uh really neat uh you know it was, yeah you know it, it was it's kind of fun to uh cruise through the desert and then you know wind up in, in the jungle it, it was just really cool you know yeah yeah, and it's a neat uh, spot in there. There's a lot, and it, like if if you like the glassing game, which I know you do, I do. Um, that's a good spot for it up in there. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I could. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, just with that one week, and I feel like I just barely scratched on the surface there. I mean, um, you know, we did we we did get into a bear within the first two minutes, legit. Yeah. Like we got out of the truck, and uh, uh, I'm not. I, I think I got a glimpse of that one, but again, I was right on the camera and tucking in right there with you to. Yeah. Uh, and and I think if we, we played that easy, we could have got that guy. I just don't think he was big, big enough probably. So. No. And I, I think, I think if we would have, cause it was basically, we popped out of the truck. We were making a plan to walk up this old uh, skid steer road and there's a bear a hundred yards from us up in front. Of him. I'm like, Holy shit, there's a bear there. And I just caught the tail of, of him. Uh, but in that elevation or that area specifically, there's a lot of grizzlies. And I've, I've right. done that before when I've walked walking up and I'm like, Oh, there's a bit black bear turns out to be a grizzly. And you're like, ah, shit. So you got to right. scoop him away. And um, so you got to kind of definitely do your due diligence and make sure you're not stalking the wrong bear. But yeah, I, I think, I think if we would have pulled the trigger on that one specifically and that early into the hunt, I mean, we, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of time, but um I think if we would have pulled the trigger. We would have been questioning it and would have like kind of been like, well, I think did so we too. make the right call? Did we do it? I mean, you know, looking back at it now, having the, you know, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we, we weren't able to get it done. We, um, but I mean, I, I still think to this day we made the right, right decision and not, and not uh, going after that. I agree. Thing. I agree completely. I mean, like, legitimately, I was just pulling off of, uh, off of out of the back of my truck you had just circled around past the past the mirror of the truck and you're like oh right away and you know I, I wasn't mentally ready at that point I, I kind of just don't feel like you get a gimme like that which is yeah. a you know whatever uh something to work on I guess but uh you know I, I think it also would have took away from what we ended up capturing and mm -hmm. you know us grinding it out a little bit uh you know, even if we did come out of it empty handed, I still think, you know, I got a lot out of it personally uh, for our first hunt together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 
got a ton of great footage. Like it's really nice. Like I look at it, I'm like, unfortunately, you know, I'm, I'm that that's, that's a huge challenge that I'm really struggling with is, you know, like I, I've put out quite a few hunts, hunt videos that, that don't have that finality to it. Um, but I, I still think they have something to offer, but you know, that on, it's an unfortunate reality that, that you do need uh, a good story arc that does end uh, 95% of the time or more with, uh, you know, with the payoff that people are, are tuning in for, you know, people want to analyze that part of the hunt. Hunters like to analyze that part of the hunt. Um, so, so yeah, so that, that's a, something I've been, I've been struggling with a little bit to sort of, uh, and, and it's raised my, the stakes. Like I've never trained harder. I've never been more ready for a hunting season than this one in my entire life. And, uh, it's, it's because I have the drive to, you, you know, that I need, I need those goals to be, to be met. So, yeah. Well, w- one thing I, I learned about you, cause before this hunt, we did, you know, we, we talked off and on for the last probably year or so we kind of, we knew each other, but I mean, uh, it, it doesn't take long, you know, one hunting, one good hunting trip with, uh, with somebody and you either, you're either friends for life or you never talk again type of thing. Right. Yeah, um, I, I know. Yeah, for sure. Like I kind of had a sense just from our talking that we, we do. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I always, uh, you know, I come into, um, new friendships cautiously in, in the hunting world. It's a, there's a big commitment to having hunting partners and hunting friends and yeah uh, well and we talked about that too like I, like yeah. i've got buddies and and you know Kazi, for instance and i've mentioned him many times on this show right. and he's he's been on the show right um he's right. actually the first guy i was able to drag on this podcast so uh you know i love Kazi. Kazi, i've known Kazi for man like 35 years right. if not longer and like i love the guy to death when i go hunting with him i don't expect to punch tag I just don't, but yeah. I love the time hunting with him. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. it's I'm, just, it's just a different, I put value on it differently than I do, I guess when I'm hunting. Like if I, if I'm being honest, like I'll, if I want to really go out and pursue an animal, I'm going to go by myself. I'm just going to go and yeah. not take anybody with me and just get after it. But I, I can relate to that for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So anyway, back to what we we're talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, you and I, we hit it off right away and it was, uh, yeah. it was a lot of fun, dude. I had a blast and, uh, I'm looking forward to the next ones. Um, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, and I, what, one thing I want to touch on what we were talking about, they're 95 that, you know, the reality of bow hunting is bow hunting, especially not, I mean, hunting right. in general is hard enough, but I've been bow hunting like a strictly bow hunter for a few years now. And the reality of bow hunting is like you said, 95 plus percent of the time, I'd say it's more like 98% of the time you go out, you're not going to have successful days. It, yeah. That's just the reality of it, especially in BC. I mean, BC, it, it, I mean. it's not, yeah. you know, it's not what you see. It's not Montana. It's not Wyoming. There's isn't these big open fields and, you know, it, it, BC creates a lot of opportunity, but it also has a lot of challenges um, for bow hunters. You know, and I think that is why here, you know, we only have a nine day archery season. There's no real benefit to bow hunting. I think if you were to add it any longer and Hey man, I'm a huge proponent of adding, you know, longer archery seasons. Sure. But, sure. Um, I just feel how, you know, the, how hard it is. It, uh, it's, it's just a tough pill for people to sell, to sell to people. And like I said, a lot of, a lot of discouragement because like when I first started bow hunting, man, and I, I strictly went to a bow, I didn't. I only punched one tag that year. So right. it was, uh, it was a tough one. Uh, I find it super impressive. Uh, you know, the ability and, and uh, I'm not sure that I'm ever going to get there, but, uh, for you to be that dedicated, you know, I, I see that as a huge plus, uh, the amount you work at it and the fact that you are, you know, purely dedicated to it. I think that's, uh, commendable to say the least. I think you're right. The, what, you know, from my limited experience with bow hunting, um, you know, the challenges to hunting in British Columbia with a bow spot and stock is, uh, you know, is pretty, 
pretty up there. I, but I think still, you know, when when you think about um, story arcs and stuff, you know, people a lot of bow hunting culture from the east trickles into people's show watching culture and they're used to guys in whitetail stands Mm -hmm. that may this could be a uh you know a hunt that's taken place throughout the whole month of november they're just set up in two or three stands and they do get that payoff which is you know i I do agree that there's there's a storyline for not getting um you know i'm I'm pretty getting really good at the storyline for not get having success at the end I'm trying to work on, on, uh, uh, not, but I, I agree, you know, that's with a rifle, you know, that's with a rifle. It's hard. So with a bow, it's like, it's stacked way, way up, but I, but I'm, you've, uh, you know, intrigued and inspired me enough to really take a more focused look at it. I, I just feel so busy in my brain right now with everything else going on, but, but it, it's sort of, it's turned into, you know, one of the, sh- one of the sheets on my one note um, is all the, all the fact gathering and, and potential options there are for bows out there from speaking to people like yourself. So that when I, when I do make the plunge into, into bow in, in a more dedicated fashion, like I've done some bow hunting, I unfortunately had an unsuccessful uh, bow hunt on Texada uh, this January where I'd actually, uh, hit a deer and didn't recover it. I, I don't want to blame the gear cause I think I hit him good. I just hit him a little high maybe. And I, he didn't leave blood for me, but, um, but, the, it made me reflect on the fact that, Hey, I'm super confident when I'm rifle hunting, I know my equipment inside and out. And I couldn't honestly say I knew my bow equipment inside and out. Like I'd, hit the reps in the backyard there, Mm -hmm. you know, stretching out to 30 yards down over the bank here, doing some angle shots for six weeks, like really intensive. Okay. I'm going to, you know, I want to be ready for this Texada thing. And it just didn't, it once, once I had that bad experience, it like, I, I basically sat myself down and said, okay, if you're going to do this, then you you better take a more focused approach where you just know your equipment. It's a part of your regimen through the year. And, you know, you're only going to go out and pursue an animal once you've managed to fit, you know, once I've managed to fit it into my regimen, which I'm still not sure how I'm going to do, but you know, yeah, you that, got a lot on your plate, especially with the stuff you got coming up and we'll get into that later, but yeah. you're at, you're 100% right. I mean, it, it's all confidence and like, I've told you before, and I, I've told the listeners of the show, I'm more confident with a bow than I am with a rifle. Like, I, I don't ever shoot a rifle. I haven't shot a rifle in a right. long time. Outside shooting, you know, checking the sights on, like, my young kid's 22. Um, right. But, I mean, I just put I put a lot of time and a lot of effort into my bow. It's a daily thing. It's part of my everyday life, really. It's, it's just part of my process. And I've done it for so long now that it's just habit. It's just like one of those things. It's like getting up and putting socks on or brushing my teeth or having a shower, really. It's like it's just part of my daily routine now. I've just yeah, been doing it, it so long. It's super clear that it is. Like, I mean, you know, whether you're following you on, on social or not, I mean, it's it's definitely super clear if you spend uh, a weekend with you, you know, the level of dedication that you're dealing with there. And, you know, I, I feel as connected to, like, you know, doing the reloading for my rifle mm-hmm. and, and tuning everything and being, you know, being a thou off the lands and, you know, making sure I'm within 0.1 of a grain of everything I'm doing to whatever tolerance, you know, my, uh, my scale can, can muster basically, but taking yeah. the, the little human element out, trimming my brass, making sure my neck tensions are right, you know, using match primers, uh, which are hard to find, but, um, <laughs> but still it's, uh, yeah, like even though I don't shoot my rifle every day, it's mm-hmm. because I put in those other reps and I'm always I feel organized. It's part of your process. Yeah. Things are tight and right, and they just sit yeah. there and they're ready and they're lethal. And then I I make sure I do get my practice in. Um, uh, well, and it comes down to simplicity too. It's not easy to shoot your like shooting a bow is a lot more accessible than shooting a rifle. You know, true. I can go out in my front yard and I can throw arrows for seven seven at seventy yards all day long. 
I can't be start. I can't be you know slinging. I can't be fly. Let brass brass fly on my front. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I mean, like, so like when we were out there, you did a bit of long distance shooting, and like, man, I was totally impressed by that. You're like, see that rock across the way, and I'm like looking through my binos, and I'm like that rock, and you know, I'm like you're like that little white one, and I'm like, yeah. You're like, watch, and then it was like bang, and obviously I shook. I didn't yeah. watch the bullet hit, but then I looked back, and the rock was gone. You can see the trace there to the, the <laughs> puff. I stayed in the scope enough that I could see the hit. I just mm-hmm. lost it for a split second there, but yeah, that yeah. was. And it's the same type of dedication that yeah, you know, people are putting into the, the rifle, the long range stuff, and like like yeah. you get into like the ballistics of like reloading and all that stuff. It's the same. It's the same process. It's just a different. You know, it's just applied to different aspects of hunting. And like, I I mean, to me, it's either I I, I kind of I'm. I'm kind of one, you know, if I get into something, I jump all in. I know you're kind of the same, you know, yeah. you're, you're cut from the same cloth. You get into it and it's like, it's all or nothing. And if, if you're not going to give it your all, you're not going to bother doing it. Right. You don't half ass anything. And I've, I learned that from you and having, you know, you're good now, like you don't half ass anything as relevant in like your family life, your business life. And like the success you've had with high VC and like, you know, the success you had hunting, it's, it's all relevant. Right. Yeah, uh, you know, I appreciate you saying that. I I agree that we're cut from that same cloth. It's, I get really jacked up when I see other people that are just, you know, that I don't have to grab their hand or inspire mm-hmm. them to move or like, you know, oh, we got to do something hard here. It's, it's just like, that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. That's what, you know, that's what it calls for, you know. Okay, we got to we got to rip over here. It's going to be you know, three miles, but it's got to be flat out because, you know, we've got an hour of light left. And if we're going to get any chance of this, you know, it's one chance and let's go. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. uh, Yeah. Yeah. No, it was good. Speaking of that. Yeah. It's, uh, you're looking good, looking fit. You look like you're ready for the mountains. I've been, yeah, I've, I'm in the best shape I've been in, in, uh, in quite a while for sure. Um, I, I don't know that I felt stronger because I've been, uh, I've been, I've been sort of just, you know, you know, part of watching you too, it has inspired me for sure. Like, I'm like, you know, there you are every day grinding it out. I'm like, like I got to grind and I've always been active. I've always been pretty fast, uh, for my stature in the bush. Um, but really, you know, I have an office job as well. And, uh, I, I really could see it starting to take its toll and it was, uh, it was pissing me off really. Uh, just frankly, I was, I wasn't willing to, to let go. So, mm-hmm. so I pushed back pretty hard. I, I feel the difference both mentally, physically, um, just the way my body's working. I, I do feel ready. So I'm, yeah, I'm I, I think that's the biggest, like, as we get older, we get into our forties. We're, our, we're so like, having gone through so many ups and downs and, and overcoming so many hurdles and obstacles in life, you build a mental toughness, right? You, you create this mental toughness you don't have when you're in your twenties. Yeah. And it's like, for me, I find it's like my mind wants, I, I can do any like I can do so much more than my body is willing to, to push out. And I've noticed in the, you know, in the last couple of years, especially like I used to train hard. I played, you know, competitive, competitive hockey. I trained really hard. And then I, you know, I got, I continued training in my twenties and then, you know, life got lifey, you know, I have a really physical job and I was working 12 hours a day. I had new kids at home. So I kind of fell out of like this, there was a decade or so where I fell out of, I fell out of this routine of like staying physically act- active. But as I started hitting, you know, my, the later part, you know, the upper part of the thirties, I could definitely feel like, you know, you go down to Ben to pick something up. You're like, oh, like you're a little bit stiff. You're a little, you know, you don't have the flexibility. And then when I, I remember when I, you know, got to be like around 40, that's when I, I got back into it. And and now, yeah, I mean, I, I get, you know, I train every day, but I just do it. You know, if I don't, I just feel, I just don't feel the same. I just feel like myself, if I'm pushing and grinding every day, I just mentally, I just, I, I feel better physically. I feel better. I got to stretch it. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. For me to go to a forty for a forty-five minute run, I'm gonna have to warm up for, and stretch for forty-five minutes. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, but I right. mean, I definitely feel a lot better than I think I would if I wasn't doing it. So. Um, yeah, I think uh, you know, and I I think you know, if you got that mental toughness, um, that's that's 
matters so much because I, I think there, there are people that might be in, in better physical shape than me. Maybe they work out at the gym a little more and are, um, but I mean, the mountains will chew you up. And if you're mentally not there, you, there's no amount of training. You need training to do it, but there is no amount of training that will get it done for you if you're mentally not able to, to you know, put yourself in that pain game. Oh, yeah, 100%. You could be in the best shape. Of the, you know, you could be the best in the best shape of anybody in the world. You get into the mountains and you're not mentally strong, you'll crumble. And it, you could be out of shape, but be mentally strong. You'll still make it through. I mean, you're going to you, suffer. You, can, it's, yeah, it's, you yeah, won't cover the it, ground you want to, no. but, you, but you can make it through. Yeah, that. You're going to feel like, a lot better if, you, if you're in shape, you know, and you, you've been keeping your training up all year round, you know. Um, that's a big thing I find, too. And with people, I tell them, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. Just enjoy what you do and do it year round. You know, do it the best. you Do it. Do it as much as you can. Don't just two you know two weeks before you're heading out on a hunt yeah, say, no, hey, that, i'm gonna start rucking and doing not, this and that yeah, yeah i've been i haven't stopped rucking since i was rucking on my hunts in the fall like mm -hmm. i rocked all the way through the rain all the way through the winter and the the fun 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 little game i played with myself here over the last month is i've added in um uh, a little bit it's more of a it's mental and it's a physical challenge i just put a 12 pound dumbbell in each hand so i do a 10k it's about 600 meters elevation gain and i and i basically refuse to put my dumbbells down until i'm absolutely crushed and need, need water and i'll put put my dumbbells down three times in 10k and uh yeah. just for a drink and 12 pounds is not a lot of weight, but when you're carrying that and, and then I have 43 in my training rock on the back. So it's 60 odd pounds that I'm carrying, uh, for load, but because, you know, by, by about 5k in, you, you can't feel anything with your fingers. Uh, my left hand performs worse than my right for whatever reason, but they're, they're not from when like, your days are you being single. So, yeah. <laughs> The, so, but it, but it's mental training because my body is, my mind is telling me, not my body, my mind is telling me to cop out, put them down, catch them on the back loop, you know, just do the seven and a half K today. Don't do the 10, you know, take the short, you know, the, oh, it's, yeah, yeah. All the things that your mind goes through your mind. Yeah. But I do not let my mind win. Like I do, I refuse. And I, and I, when I tell you, I'm stopping after, you know, five or six K nonstop, really pounding. Uh, I'm, you know, stopping for the first time. I can't feel my hands and I yeah. just need a drink. So well, that's, that's, yeah, that, hardcore, that's dude. been good. That, that has been good. It, it feels a little hardcore. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that is freaking hardcore. And that, it's funny how the mind instantly, no matter what you're doing, if it's anything hard, your mind instantly comes up with excuses strategic yeah to, to get out of doing it like no yeah. matter what it is no matter what you're doing it's like yeah. okay your mind instantly that's like your first place your mind goes and it's like hey you got to tell yourself like hey snap the fuck out of it what's going on yeah. it's like yeah, you have you two really sides of your brain and it. it's like hey the fuck out of the way what are you talking about no we got to go like you, you're running like i find that when going along runs like okay well you're two miles in and you're already it's like already it's like okay well you know, you got a bit of pain in your calf. You, you should stop. You should rest, right? Or like, you know, you don't have to go 10K. This nine's good enough or, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, it's all uphill and you're just going to hurt your knees on the way down here. Let's just turn around yeah. here. And it's like, no right. matter. But yeah, like that's what builds that mental toughness is just pushing past that, pushing through it. And unfortunately, though, you keep pushing through and your mind just comes up with new, new bullshit excuses. Yeah, yeah, up. for sure. It's, it's always there. But the satisfaction of just pushing through it and oh, really yeah. being honest with yourself because, you know, we've all not pushed through on something before anybody who's done anything in life, you know, there's been times when you quit, you know, 10 yards short of the line for sure. I don't care who you are, how dedicated you are, you know, because your mind will always give you an out. And if you really, and that, that's where you fall apart on a 10 day backcountry hunt, because if on, if on day two and three, you're getting in the too hard basket, or now you're using, Hey, let's let the glass do the work and not our feet. Hey, that is, that is one of the most effective sheep hunting strategies you're ever going to get, but you got to know when, when to hold them, when to fold them.
if you've pounded out that those bowls for three days and all you're waiting for is something to top over to make that successful, even though it's, it's going to be a, a suck day, if it's a rain day on day four, uh, that's going to be fogged out. Well, hey, you're, you're going to make a move and get to the edge of, of your next basin area. And then you're going to wait it out there, not just wait out in no man's land where you've already proven it's not working. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, that's mental toughness in my mind is, is knowing that you got to push because yeah. you yeah. get crutch, people start shrinking back. And yeah, and we've, I've felt it. I've felt it many times and I've, I'm just, I'm, I won't put up with it basically with myself. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you do feel it, you didn't show any when we were hunting there together. I mean, uh, we put on a lot of, I think we put on a lot of miles, especially on that Saturday. I mean, for a bear hunt, it, it wasn't a t- typical traditional bear hunt by any means. I think, you know, we were up at four 30, I think four 30 in the morning. And, uh, you know, we went, we did a hard hike and then we came back, grabbed a breakfast for about half an hour and then we were gone again. And uh, yeah, we, we, we yeah, put on some miles. Yeah. The, it wasn't, it wasn't a truck hunt. That's for sure. I, no, I mean, no. it was, uh, we might've gotten the trunk to go or the truck to go back for that, uh, lunch, like you say, but you know, that was already after, uh, cranking out a big morning. And yeah. then, uh, and then we, you know, we went right till dark after that. Yeah. Yeah. We put on a good, uh, it was a good 17 hour day for sure. It was dark. Yeah. To dark. Yeah, it was um, good. Not your traditional bear hunt by any means. I mean, no, uh, it wasn't your hunt the morning and hunt the evening type of thing, or just hunt the evening. Um, yeah, it wasn't the oh, just have coffee and, and lazily grab my rifle and head out. Eh? the rifle mm-hmm. hunters. Uh, it was uh, it was bow madness. It was uh, up at four thirty, like we're mule deer hunting or hiking in the dark a little bit, and then uh, and then but it but it paid off. Like yeah, it you know, did. We we did catch. Uh, catch that one bear right away early and the other one was uh you know it, it wasn't necessarily at the end of the day when we seen them i mean we did have to move around and, and move fast but those are the that time when we seen the one that we made the the stock in on the couple stocks in that area mm-hmm. um you know that's that's at the end of the hey you just eat in that camp a little bit okay let's go out for the evening now and you miss that bear too Mm-hmm. and we didn't yeah, see another yeah so, well yeah. And, yeah exactly that's it and like we and that was the thing you know it, i knew it was only a matter of time until we seen one through it that day because we started grinding early we got up we had coffee we didn't eat and we were gone we we're you know we had the boots on and we we're we we're moving around we we're hiking we came back like i said for a quick breakfast but then after that it was on again and uh we were putting the miles on and i i knew and like we just had that feeling like, okay, it's only a matter you, we could only literally cover so much ground with our feet before it just pays off. And that's how hunting works. I mean, that's how life yeah. works. Really. You grind it out and you put enough time and enough effort and you know, it's going to work out. It's going to pay off. And it did. Uh, unfortunately, you know, th- that specific situation didn't, didn't turn out, but I mean, it was still, it was still, you know, at, there was still, you know, the proof is in the pudding that you just work hard yeah. and, and it, it, good things happen. That could have happened for us for sure. Like yeah. I, I was pretty impressed with us in general. Just that's what I mean about no one had to hold anyone's hand. We knew what, well, fortunately you knew the ground. I, I didn't mm-hmm. know the ground. So you had that advantage. So you knew we could pull around back mm-hmm. and, and then park there and, and jet up. I mean, that made the difference to being able to um, approach him quickly from downwind, but he was still a long ways away. Oh yeah. And, yeah. No, no one asked anybody what to do. It was just straight up over the top. And, uh, yeah. and then yeah. we were just watching the wind. And then once we got in the zone and like you say, you're stabbing ranges and, and could have worked out. Yeah. It, it, I, I, like I said, I thought for sure, I was just waiting for that little tuft of black hair to crest over the ridge. And then I was going to draw back and then he was going to take another step. I already had the range locked in and I was going to, I was going to send it, but you know, again, it's like bow hunting is one of those things that it presents so many challenges. I mean, if we would have had a rifle, obviously, I mean, um, we were only a couple, we were only a couple of yard, hundred yards away when we seen him the, the, again, the second time. And I mean, I think that rock, how far was that rock you were picking off at the other across the just on 490, I think it was. Yeah. So 490. So he, he was the first time you seen that bear, he was maybe a little bit closer than that maybe a tiny bit 400 ish maybe he was 600 
That's no, he think. was he was definitely closer because we were looking up at it and then we were looking down at where we spotted him. And then looking at we were in the same spot um where you took the shot. Like the next day you were just yeah, yeah. We were, we were, when we were getting out of there, I wanted to see you shoot and you were shooting further than he was where he yeah, was. Yeah, it was quite top. a bit further actually thinking about it now because it was right from where you had first seen him, basically, only I shot the opposite direction. Yeah, and you oh. shot across the valley, and you're hitting that rock way the hell over on the other side, and I could barely pick it off with my... That was a good one. And it was just a single cold bore one shot. I said, this is it. This is uh, all. This is the, you know, the next paychecks on this shot. So let's uh, let's do our cold bore one shot and, and smoked it. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, did some reloading again this week uh, with that, uh, that same recipe for that same gun. So mm-hmm. get out, do, do a bit more... Uh, I got a couple more training sessions with it here before I uh, hit the road for sheep. So, so when you're training, what kind of like what kind of ranges are you doing when you're training with your rifle? We we like we don't ever really talk about rifle hunting on this show, so it's right. kind of uh, new and exciting. Yeah. So for for me for training, uh, not for hunting. Um, you know, I sh- I shoot out to eleven hundred yards. Basically, is <sighs> about the way, furthest yeah. that I've I've practiced. I mean. Things start to get quite a bit more tricky for the gear that I'm using uh, out to that range. So, but I regularly, like I really regularly practice the 700 yards. That's kind of the sweet spot, seven to 500. I'm usually poking around. Um, that That's what I'm looking to check out. I, I'm not looking to, to shoot groups, although I will shoot groups at least once this week. I'm not looking to shoot groups on paper at the range. I'm looking to be prone out in the field, uh, either setting up targets. Uh, I mean, I just, um, you know, look, I'm looking for a more natural setting to to do the shooting. And I shoot lower number of rounds with a cold bore to try and really, really simulate um, that hunting situation. And then when we, when we talk about hunting, I mean, realistically, um, uh, I, I, I set my range out to 500 limit, uh, for animals. However, in absolutely perfectly still conditions with a perfect rest, like a perfect setup, I'll, I'll stretch that out to 600, but then uh, nothing beyond that really feels ethical to me for uh, shooting on an animal because, you know, I, uh, it, it doesn't take much to make a mistake at that range. Yeah. No, definitely not. That's a long way, man. That is a long yeah, way. it feels a long way. Like what you know, like when, when I, you're looking at it, it's a long way. Yeah, when that's what I mean. It, it has that sense of being yeah. wow, like you know, the benefits from a rifle hunting perspective that it offers is completely unalerted game. Mm-hmm. So when you're close range uh, hunting, you know, so there's an animal at sixty yards. Well, there's there's a chance here now in order to get into a position to shoot them, you're probably offhand. That's working against you. You know, you're, you've got an alert animal, um, maybe moving, maybe quartering weirdly. Whereas, you know, the patient's game, uh, an animal is 350, 400 yards away. Um, you know, you've got time, you've got mm-hmm. nothing but time. And, if and see, it's funny. Like I think of 60 yards as you have time compared to right. like, 20 right. yards it's right. like holy fuck man this thing like it can feel me breathing you know what i mean like you. when yes. shit gets up close and tight it's like man if you could reach out and like that's when i feel shit I, like yeah it, that's it's funny. almost too close <laughs> it's just our calibrations are just completely different but similar in mm-hmm. in the way we look at it you know um yeah like when 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 i get something super close it just tends to be more active situation which isn't conducive to uh well hey it, it works lots of people uh yeah. hunt, including myself that way and shoot off hand and you know shoot like i think you know moose is a um a good animal for hunting in close range with a rifle and stuff mule deer i find them they're much more they're more alert they're, oh, they're yeah. moving a lot more you know um then you mealies get... are mealies are tough man when you get them in close like you know if you get a rutting bull elk or you know you get the moose in the right mood they don't really give a shit but i mean like you even i, I mean i guess it's the same with mule deer you can get you can catch mule deer on a good day and you know for the most part they don't really give a shit but 
they're just so like those big bucks. They're just so they're cagey. They're they're cagey. Absolutely. That's so cool. It's uh, like, you know, I think they've just grown to be the deepest love of a big, big game animal Mm -hmm. for me, just because of where they live, the way they are, their character. I I think they're, you know, uh, they, all the, there's something special about getting up in the mountains after these guys or, uh, yeah, you get them in the high Alpine and there's nothing like it. And that, and that's one thing I, I, you know, not that I miss it about rifle hunting. It's just, you don't, when you're hunting with a bow to be like, it, it really hard to hunt those high Alpine mule deer in, right. you know, with a bow because by, you know, to, to get it's, it's different. If you see them, you're 200 yards away or 250, 300 yards away. It's yeah. a lot different than trying to sneak in on a high mountain Alpine huh. buck up to 40, 50 yards. Yeah. Not, nothing is quiet up there. No. Even, even when you're veg dried out, e- even when it's not all dry and cracky, you're on the North face and it's, it stayed lush and man, it's, you can't move through that stuff too quietly. Even, you know, like, uh, well, I, like carrying a bow, you know, just walking through it, you know, you're getting caught in. It's so thick right. in there. Um, right. Yeah. It, it, is probably one of the hardest things i think to to do i think watching you do that 93 yard shot it just happened to be 93 yards at camp it's just where you shot uh, or took the range uh-huh. and you let her go and uh and then you know you shot three shots there and then i thought and you could hear it hitting the target um uh-huh. and, and then i was like okay well whatever kev's hitting the target good good uh, figured he's pretty good he looks like he knows what he's doing that's great we walk up to the target and they're you know they're in the book they're all kill shots all three of those 93 yard shots were kill shots Mm -hmm. um would be in the vitals you know two of them were two inches apart and the other one was three inches away from the group of two i I mean i was like yikes like that that was that just kind of it kind of got at me a little bit to say hey i'm not sure that i'm ever going to get good enough to shoot practice at that distance um but similar to hunting i practice longer than i hunt uh like you're saying you know you're shooting uh 90 yards um, over 100 at times um but that's then then when you come back to 60 60 or 40 is like a chip shot right so it's similar well, and, to- and that that's just myself too and like that's not like i have killed deer you know at 90 yards <laughs> uh, i prefer not to uh, yeah, you know, sure. I've, I've, I've lost deer. I've shot deer at 20 yards and I've lost yeah. them. I shot deer with a rifle and I've lost them. So, right. um, but I mean, I, I think, I feel like every shot presents different challenges. Um, like shooting at a target, obviously 90, you know, 90, 90 yards or whatever it was is a lot different than shooting at an animal. Like there's a, there, like, especially with a bow, there's a lot, like there's a lot that an animal can do. And the reaction time is so quick for an animal. For that time of flight, the time of flight for the animal to get there. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, like depending on the animal, don't get me wrong. If, if I'm in a good spot, no wind. And I feel like he's just down, he's got his head down and he's feeding. He's not going to move. I, I don't have any problem shooting 90 yards, but again, that comes down to my process and it comes the same with, you know, you put the time in to your rifle and I put the time in to my bow and it, you know, it's all, it's six of one half dozen the other. Right. So. It is. I mean, I like the, I like analyzing uh, the commonalities between the two, you know, the polar opposite side of, of, you know, those, the hunting purist brain, like uh, of the bow hunter and purist, and, you know, I won't call myself a, a rifle hunting purist, but I'm on the rifle spectrum big time, right? That's where I live. And it's just fun to see how many similarities there are uh, as opposed to differences. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of comparison between the two. They're just two different animals all yeah. together. You know, I, I don't think that one is hard, one is easier than the other and one is harder. I think I think bow's harder. I, I I'm pretty convinced that bow is harder. Uh, yeah, well, it is like it all. Like I mean, those long range shots they're hard too. I mean, especially you get up into the high altitude, the high elevation, because then it's like it's doing different things to your bullet. Like so, when you're shooting down here, when you're shooting, when you're practicing your shots for your sheep hunt, you you realistically 
can't practice the exact same shot that you're going to be doing up in the high up in the high mountains because the elevation the altitude is all different you have to take all that stuff into consideration you have to know how to judge that you don't have to know how to read it when you're shooting a bow i mean other than cold string you really you know it it isn't going to make a huge impact on your arrow and you're it like within 60 yards 70 yards whatever you're shooting like most people shoot 50 60 yards um it it, you know it ain't going to yeah, those the small things are definitely going to matter uh, for long range shooting. If you're shooting 600 yards in the mountains and you've been shooting 600 yards down here at 100 feet above sea level at your favorite little planking spot and you don't adjust your ballistics, like, you know, we, I, I've used, well, written and I've used, uh, you know, now applications. With, but I would have to manually solve solve for the atmospheric conditions, the direction I'm shooting. All of that's going to matter because the time of flight, as soon as you start stretching it out, those things are going to matter. You know, it's crazy. Like I, I, uh, I've been a huge applied ballistics um, uh, follower, supporter, uh, user. Uh, that's Brian Litz out of the U.S. There, he's one of the biggest ballisticians that they got down there, probably the biggest um, for for popularity. And his a- applied ballistic software is like really, really, really good. Um, but you have to input the data correctly, and if you yeah, don't, yeah. then you may as well be, you know, just sort of doing a holdover and and mm-hmm. wishing a prayer. And and it can give you a false sense of of confidence if you're not aware of those things when you do take them up to you know uh, a couple thousand meters you know mm-hmm. in elevation um fortunately like things are getting better and better now the solvers are built right into uh to a lot of devices um you know where it'll range it's got a compass it, it knows the direction you're pointing your range so it takes takes it to account the earth's rotation and then uh uh, it'll, it has, uh, onboard, uh, uh, barometric pressure reading. So it, it uses that to solve your elevation. And then it also takes the temperature into account and that like having those things solved, then the big boy, the big, big, big one is the wind. That's the yeah. big one because ballistics are mathematical or trajectory is mathematical and the wind, um, Although you can use mathematics to figure it out, it's just much more subjective. It takes your interpretation of yeah, the wind, yeah. where you're at, where you're shooting, mm-hmm. yada, yada. So Yeah, and that's the same as archery too. And I know if I'm shooting in high wind situations or even windy situations, I'll time the wind. You know, I'll play right. it where it's like gust heavy, draw, the gust slows down, release, right? Right. I play it and I don't, you know, I have to time when you're shooting in a windy situation you have to time it perfectly and like especially with an arrow and depending on like your arrow speed and your arrow weight i mean that will move 50 yards it can move your arrow you know substantial way substantial Um, like outside of the plane of the animal that you're shooting at right like i yeah i've shot enough arrows to uh, in a little bit of wind uh not on not at game but in practice just to be like yeah these things just you know Mm-hmm. Even with the advent of these narrower shafts and little more wind resistant systems and better broadheads and, and mechanicals and stuff that, that can still put a pretty big load on the side of a, an arrow, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it can move it off course quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, I, that's how I practice when I'm doing it. But like I say, I mean, all that stuff that you have to put together to be effective at your craft is, uh, you know, to me, it, like I said, it's six of one, one. half dozen of the other. Um, right it's just the process you like my process the reason i love like i got in like i one of the things that really drew me into bow hunting was just like what mostly of like what i viewed my process to be to be a bow hunter and it it came down to being it's a year-round dedicated like i have to be dedicated year-round i have to train now you don't have to train as hard like you don't have to train every day to be an effective bow killer by no means i mean there's better really good bow hunters that don't train like there's there's right. the best sure, archers yeah. in the wor- world don't that, that's just my per- personal pro- um, process of doing it right like I, I just it's all part of the puzzle that i feel it you know and, and like i said it, 
I've done it so so long and it's become habit now. And I just made it part of my process where, you know, I work out and I shoot my bow every day and I do that just to be a more effective bow hunter. And like, yeah, you don't, I don't have to be in top shape, but it, it's not going to hurt by any means. Like I can, I can go up, up a hill and when I get to the top of the hill, I know I'm not gassed. I'm not breathing heavy. I can draw back, put myself in a shot situation. No problem. Yeah. That, I mean, that's super important. I, I think like self-reliance, being able to rely on yourself. And, and if that's what it takes where you then feel like, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening in the moment that are just happening. You're not, you know, you're not working through the motion. Like you say, you're not really lost with breath and everything. And if that's what it takes to rely on yourself, then that's the only way you're going to get satisfaction out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it comes down to confidence, right? You got to have confidence that yeah. for me, I'm most confident if I'm, you know, if I'm in shape and I practice all the time, I'm more, I'm, I'm, I'm more confident. And if you're more confident, you're a more effective killer in reality. Yeah. If you want to crush your confidence, you can just take up filming uh, just out of the <laughs> blue and go out there and start spraying around like dad cam <laughs> and then come back and try and edit that. And then you're like, what? I thought this was going to be easy. This, <laughs> this sucks. This looks horrible. What am I doing here? And then, and then you start that whole journey of learning how to shoot a bow as effective as, as you do, or learning how to be proficient with your rifle. And now you're just doing it with a new instrument. And it's just been super satisfying, super painful. Um, I like technical it, things. But though. like, yeah, like you said, like you and I have talked about before, like, the rewards and you, and you like, like you enjoy doing it, like the editing part you enjoy doing and like you enjoy the whole process. And like, obviously like I feel like filming is a lot more than podcasting about podcast. I remember the beginning, man, it was painful. Like my audio and For like sure. just my questioning and just like how comfortable I was in conversations and just like felt like, man, I it would take me four times as long to put a podcast together as it would to record it. And, you know, but now obviously as you know, you get into it and you, you develop and you feel more comfortable with like who you are and, and, and what guests you want to have on your show and um, you know, the direction you want to head once you establish all that, then it becomes easier. Right. Then it just, it's more natural. And I feel like you said that part of the process. And I feel like from watching your first videos, you're kind of starting to fit into your mold of that. A little bit. I, I think I, I can I can see glints of, of what's in my brain. And, and I'm just on the very edge of being able to conjure it for, you know, we're talking five seconds out of a 15 clip has something that I'm like, OK, I'm I'm super happy with that. Now I got to figure out how it fits in in the story here um, and just to slowly see a few more of those glints at like every time I felt like it, um, you know, I, when I scrubbed through the footage from our weekend, you know, there was quite a few moments where I, it looked like the, the landscape was pretty picturesque, especially where we put that stock on. It was pretty epic. You know, the sky was, was, um, was, you know, had that marble cloud look to it. And, uh, you know, it, it just really, really uh you know i was like dang this is really good now kevin let's get up there and let's get a bear because if we do this is this is close mm -hmm. to this is close you know yeah. this is close to what's out there but it's still got a ways to go yeah well i mean i was really impressed like you know um you know i knew you were you were obviously you're a hard-working guy and then you know, obviously you spend that much time as, you know, as much time as, and like, not only that, like we've talked a lot since then. Um, but I mean, the amount of dedication and, the, and how hard of a working guy you are, it, uh, it was really, it was really fun to hang out with you for the weekend. Um, yeah. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, I, I like showing people like the freaky side of what it takes. Like, I'm like, you know, like I try and capture as much as I yeah. can, and w which is well over 90% of everything I film is me hustling around me getting the shot basically yeah. what i call getting the shot getting my exposure right and getting the shot um and only if something is too irresistible maybe it's a crazy blowdown that we we have to get over that i will slow us down for a second just to buy myself a little bit of time i'll take us at a real time a little bit mm -hmm. just to say hold on i 
you know, I was yeah. filming something back there. I just got to get ahead here. But but I really try not to like. Well, you- and like those clips you put together. Like, I remember a few times and you're like, oh, hey, Kev, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. I got to I got to run. And then like and then you're like flipping the camera on you. I'm like, you want to do what? What do you want to do? And you're like, just <laughs> shut the fuck up. And just OK, now go. And then, like, you see it later, and you're like, oh, man, that looks pretty fucking cool. Like, you get, like, the foot shot walking through right. and, like, the trail. And, like, because, like, th- that's one thing I don't have. And, like, I I don't, I just don't, I don't have, I, I can't see things the way you see them. Like, I see it. I'm like, okay, you know, you want to walk, look at somebody's feet walking. But then when you put it with other clips and next to each other, and, like, uh, we did that little thing for Onyx. And you're like, yeah, you're watching me scroll through my phone. And then, you, like, like, and then. To me, it just looks like you're sitting there video tape recording me, and then yeah, you put it just, all together, and it's like, well, how in the fuck did that guy come up with that? Right. It's just the uh, yeah. It, it's been fun trying that other stuff. Like you know, like I never, I, I didn't have much of a presence on on Instagram. I still have a very small uh, presence there, but you know, I, I a couple months ago had six hundred people that were following me on there. Now it's a couple thousand. You know, I. Mm-hmm. Like, but I've been putting in a ton of effort to say, hey, let's do these cool little vertical mm-hmm. things and throw it out in the world. Let's make sure to try and be present there. And uh, just just there's a bunch of things coming and I'm just trying to batten down the hatches on all fronts, basically. Yeah. Um, well, you got lots of lots of cool, exciting stuff. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, the cat out of the bag here. Yeah, we could we could probably let the cat out of the bag. So I've um, I'm still. Uh, working through the paperwork on it, but I've been uh, approached by wild TV for, uh, for the hunts that I filmed in 2023, that'll be broadcast from the second quarter of 2024. So um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's up the pressure factor on me. I, I feel like I've, you know, I've been in this kind of super mode of, of absorption of learning and, you know, film theory and, and everything even outside of the hunting world, just just the technical side and and just compositions and stuff. And then to get that approach, like, frankly, it felt early. Like, if, if I'm honest, like, I, I still feel like I, like there's more to come. Like, I, I think I can push harder into, uh, like, I'm hoping over the next couple of years, I get to somewhere where I can sit down and say, wow that's kind of cool like the 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 whole thing i even get the whole thing whereas right now like i watch what i put together and i see glints of okay uh but i but i'm not satisfied and well and i think i think that's a good thing to have because if you're never satisfied you're always pushing to be better i think if you just settle and you're like you know what it's good enough i don't think like guys like you I don't think you're ever going to be happy because you're always striving to be a little bit better. You're always pushing to be a little bit better. You're, you're, I think that's true. Yeah, I think that's true. I think even when, when ultimately I can realize maybe I've put together a good enough product, there's still going to be something that's eating at me, something that I'm, I'm tweaking or changing. So what, and so for the hunts, I've just went all in, I'm taking a ton of time off work here. Uh, so I got the, a, the 10 day sheep hunt, or we've kind of touched on that. And then, uh, I got a, a week long elk hunt in the interior. I, um, you know, that'll be in September. Then I'll be scouting in September as well. Um, but a really cool hunt that, uh, that wasn't on my radar that popped on my radar as of yesterday is, uh, one of my friends, uh, Louie, uh, drew for an LEH for Roosevelt elk down here oh, nice. in the lower mainland i was like odds are one in 120 or one in 130 and he and he pulled it and, and he's such a rich character uh and he's a good good friend of uh, uh another good friend of mine john is uh i would call them pretty good buddies those two right. so i'm super stoked to to go out and capture a hunt with those guys and uh help them out uh yeah. you know film pack um just be a part of it it'll be fun uh, October, I'll, um, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, how you change gears if you have, um, you know, a different friend that's coming out, but, you know, someone that's high quality that you want to spend the time with and, mm-hmm. and the hunt sort of does take a backseat to that. Um, you know, I really feel that way about, um, 
uh, opening up hunting to my wife and kids and, mm -hmm. uh, and just going slow with it and, and kind of enjoying it myself, you know, and then, and capturing that and, you know, whether or not all these hunts will see their way on to wild TV, uh, that'll depend on how, how hard we work and what comes out of them. Yeah. Uh, then we hit November and like, I mean, there's, there's a few weeks dedicated, uh, for mule deer rut hunting. And then there's every weekend and every other extra long weekend bonus long weekend, mm -hmm. uh, going. So, yeah, so it's going to be busy and there's a few other hunts mixed in there too. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the rundown. And then yeah. hopefully we can, uh, it's going to be exciting. Anyway, you're going to have, it'll be fun. It's going to be, you know, you're going to learn a lot. You're yeah. going to be busy. You're going to have to, you know, you're going to be grinding it out, but I mean, that's all part of growing. Oh. Yeah, totally. Uh, de de you know, I've ran a company for, for a lot of years now, uh, but, uh, but this is a new business. Like it's, yeah. uh, and seeing that side of it, I just want to be careful not to spoil what I love. Uh, yeah. I really want to make sure I don't spoil it because, you know, uh, but I, but I want to share this. I want this to be a part of our our family legacy and stuff to be able to say, Hey, we, we were able to contribute into this community to, mm -hmm. to this level. And that, that'll be fun for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's super cool, buddy. And, you know, like I said, I, you know, not to sound condescending, condescending and, uh, you know, we've known each other for a bit and I call you a good friend now, but I'm, I'm super yeah. proud of you and what you've done and what you accomplished. So, so I, I, and I know you're going to do well just because of how hard of a working guy you are. I got, yeah, I got to, I got to grind, man. I got, I really, uh, this, this changes the scope of pressure a little bit on me. And, uh, and I like that, like, I like being under pressure, but, uh, you know, because I, I've just, you know, purposely put this on myself with this YouTube thing and that as well, you know, is just <laughs> go around it and try and do it. And then, you know, actually put as much effort into it as I can and not just, not just do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's fun. And then with that comes, you know, some new relationships. I mean, I've appreciated your support and help there with, you know, building a relationship with Onyx. I'm a big, uh, a big map application guy, a huge, uh, mm -hmm. huge fat map and I hunter guy, you know, they, you know, still think those are fantastic. Um, I, I like, the the idea that you know this could be a, a a turnkey one one application type of show but uh it'll, it'll take the year for me to get used to it and and see how it goes but it definitely seems to combine uh both of the features that i love of those two other applications so yeah, yeah i don't use i don't use a lot of apps i mean just the, the most part is where i hunt i mostly know I right. put so much time into that area and it has the mule deer. I love to chase it has, right. the elk, it has the bear. It has a moose draw if you're lucky. And like I've died, lived up North. I did sheep hunts. I've done goat draw hunts. And like I put in for a goat hunt or a goat draw every year. And if I get it, then, you know, I'll go. But uh, for me, you know, myself, I just love chasing. I love, I love doing what I do. Right. I love bow hunting right. the animals that I love in the area. I love. And you know, it's, it, it an app to me when I pull out an app and I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. I mean, I can close my eyes. Like I, I know exactly where I am and what's going on. I've just spent so much time in there. So, right. But I mean, the app is, is, you know, in terms of just like looking at new areas and scrolling and like, it does have a lot of really cool features that I find that I don't, I do use it more. I find than you know, cause it's nice to have Google earth. It's nice to have, you know, I hunter was good for the private public land feature yeah. and back roads maps, but it's definitely nice when you can just like flip, flip over on one app. Rather than yeah, it, it does help. And, and the thing, like there's something about this internal explorer that's in me that, you know, I, I have areas that I know how to hunt really well that I don't hunt anymore because I'm, I'm pushing out. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking for something uh, and that, you know, that adds to the challenge. It adds uh, more so to my enjoyment though. Yeah, like if, if I really feel, so I find with that, with analyzing, like if I get in something early season, I really want to, uh, you know, when it's hot still, I want to check where are all the North faces, where are all the North faces with openings, where am I going to be able to 
to sort of and, and really peeling it apart, you know. So I, I like that. Uh, like I said, I've, I've used most every app that's that's out there. Um, so it, it'll be fun getting to know getting to know this uh, Onyx hunt here in Canada. So yeah, no, it's good. Yeah. Well, buddy, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. I know we talk quite a bit off and on. Um, so it's uh, it's good to get you on the show finally. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put up. It. I'm gonna put up all your stuff, all your YouTube videos. There'll be access to that on uh, on the show notes of this, and I'm also got a link going up on the web page where they can just people clicking on our web page, they can find your stuff really easy. So uh, I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. I, again, thanks for the opportunity to hunt with you. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I look forward to the next one. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Okay, buddy. We'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to the Focus Hunting Podcast, coming at you as part of the Waypoint Outdoor Collective. I want to take a quick sec and make a huge shout out and say thanks to the sponsors of this show, uh, starting with BC's premier archery shop, Hardcore Archery, located right here in Kelowna, British Columbia. Um, AKU Boots, they've uh, they've been supporting the show for a while now. Uh, both Pete and I, we've been running these boots for well over a year. You know, hunting in BC, we face probably the harshest backcountry environment in the world. We've got deserts, Rocky Mountain, extreme coastlines, you name it. Uh, and these are the only boots that have lasted me more than one hunting season. So, you know, they're definitely worth the investment. You owe it to your feet to uh, use AKU boots. Uh, use promo code FOCUS and get 15% off right. Uh, they're probably going to cringe because I always pronounce the name wrong, but uh, it is what it is. Onyx Maps, now available in Canada. Stay tuned, guys. We've partnered up with Onyx, and we're going to be getting you guys some more information on Onyx and their mapping system for Canada. Uh, for those of you in the U.S., you've already got access to it and most likely been using the app. Pete and I got early access to this app, and to be honest, it rocks. Um, but like I said, we're going to get you more information on that, and we're going to be able to get you guys a little bit of discount. Um, so lastly, if you guys could please leave a rating and review on whatever platform you're listening. We really appreciate the support. Love you guys. Until next time. Thanks.